Hey everyone, Richard Robbins here. Thank you for tuning in. Well, I got a complete update for you here on the real estate market in the greater Toronto area for 2022. Obviously, pretty crazy year. So what I want to do is I'm going to take you through some cool numbers that I think you'll find helpful. We're going to talk about the sales. We're going to talk about the inventory. We're going to talk about prices. And then at the end, I'll give you a bit of a prediction as to what I think you're going to see happen in 2023. Keep in mind this. Many of these slides are great visuals to be using when you're meeting with buyers and when you're meeting with sellers. So you can always go to our website, richardrobbins.com, and you can download these and take advantage of them because I think they will help buyers and sellers make easier and better decisions that will best serve them. So as we get started, let's have a look at the last 12 Ooh. months. What took place in the last 12 months, month by month? So if we look at this, you can see we did 5,636 sales in the month of January. Of course, we went up to 10,995 or 955 in March. And I guess we could say uh, from there it was pretty well all downhill. Yes. So you can see we started to slide down. We had a bit of a blip there in August, which was nice. But overall, the market just continued to slide. We know rates have been going up. I'll talk about those in a moment. And that has caused the market sales to continually go down to the point we got to 3,117 sales in the month of December. Now, the question is, how does 3,117 sales stack up against the last six years? Well, here's your numbers right here. So we go back to 2017, we did 4,876 sales. Now, 18 was down, 19 started to come back up a little bit. But look what happened in 2020. Now, keep in mind, 2020 was what year? That was COVID year, wasn't it? Now, if you remember, January, February, March, sales were really slow in 2020. And then they started to strengthen in April, May, June, got really strong. And they continued to be strong right through to the end of the year. So we actually got to 7,180 sales. Then we hit 2021, where the market started really strong at the beginning of the year, and a little of the first half of the year was crazy good, and then it was still good after, but it did start to go down a little bit from there, because in 2021, we got to 6,031 sales, and 2022, we're down to 3,117 sales, so obviously those numbers are very, very low. But I also created a line graph for you. This is a really cool graph that sort of shows you what happened over the last number of years. So look at 2022. So you can see 2022, you know, they got up to 10,955 sales there in March. That's the thick red line. But look at the yellow line. That was 2021. Now, 2021, in all fairness, it was a crazy year. It was a record year. That was not normal. So when you look at this graph, you can see what happened. If we look at 2020, which is the darker red, you can see where we bottomed out in March. Then the market took off, sales went way up, okay, all the way above what it was in the yellow line, which is 2021. Then 2021, as I said, started really strong, again, peaked out in March, and then sort of started a bit of a, a slight decline over the course of the rest of that year, and then it went below, obviously, what ended up happening in 2020. And then, of course, we started the year a little bit slower than we did in 2021, had two, three great months, and then after that, it continued to go down. Why? Obviously, interest rates. We started the year, everybody, with interest rates being in a quarter of a point. Yes, a quarter of a point, like free. And they went up to 4.25% by the end of the year. Now, that's a 4% increase in interest rates. Now, based on the last number of years where rates didn't go very far, then that's a big number. And that caused a lot of people to get very, very nervous. Now, think about this. When there is uncertainty in a marketplace, when people aren't sure what's going to happen, what do they do? The answer is nothing. They stop. They just wait. So I think that's what we had happen in the last half of last year is people stop. They go, okay, whoa, let's just cool it here. Let's figure out where this whole thing's going to go. Well, what's going to happen this year? Well, nobody knows for sure, but I would suggest that the governor of the Bank of Canada probably will increase rates again in January. Now, maybe I'm wrong. 
but I do think that'll happen. There could even be a second increase. Maybe not, but there could be a second increase. Now, after one or two increases, hopefully with inflation coming down because the Bank of Canada is determined to get inflation to 2%. Now, you've got to keep in mind that a lot of inflation is actually caused by supply chain issues, which are starting to work themselves out. So I think we're going to start to see inflation come down pretty substantially in the first half of the year, and that will cause the governor of the Bank of Canada to start easing up in rates. Now, will they go down this year? I don't know. I'm not convinced. I think it's more a 2024 initiative, but we'll just have to wait and see what happens. But I think we can all plan that rent rates are going to stay around where they are for this year, maybe up just a little bit. So then what are the total sales that have taken place every year for the last six years? Now, if we go back to 17, you can see we did 92,263 sales. Now, that was a very good year. Then we're down to 78,000 up to 88,000. And then 2020, which was what year? COVID year. Remember, we lost like you know, three months up front, and then we had, you know, started to make it back a little, 95,000 sales, which was the second best year of the last six years. Then we had a record-breaking year, and we went to 122,000 sales. Now, we can't compare every year to that year, because if we did, we would always be disappointed, because it was an unbelievable year. In 2022, we ended up at just over 75,000 sales, okay? Which, by the way, in terms of sales, is the lowest number of sales we've had in the last six years. What about months of inventory? Because I think this is a very important number we have to look at. So we start to look at this. We say inventory, supply and demand, is the determining factor in prices. Because can sales go down and prices go up? And the answer is yes. If inventory is not going up at the same pace as sales or more. So if we look at this, you take sales down the left side, you got active listings, and then you got months of inventory. Now, months of inventory is just take the number of active listings and divide into it the sales, tells you how many months of inventory. Then you continue to go down the left side, you got average price and days in market. Well, look at we started the year at 0.7 months of inventory. Unbelievable. So low that you're Price went from 1.24 to 1.33 in a month, in a month. Then what happened? Inventory started to rise and continued to rise pretty much the whole year where we ended the year at 2.8 months of inventory. Now, we haven't seen 2.8 months of inventory in Toronto for many years. And we ended at average price being just over a million dollars. Now, I think what's going to start to happen is I think you're going to start to see more inventory as we move into the first half of next year, or this year, I should say, 2023. And the reason being is I think a lot of people were sitting because even though the market was slow, even though there wasn't a lot of sales, guess what? There wasn't a lot of inventory either. So all of a sudden, people are going to say, okay, well, I got to sell because last year I held off because of the uncertainty because of rates. But you want to know some? It's time to get back at it. And not only that, people become climatized. So if you think about March, April, May, June, July, they're going, oh my God, rates are really, really high. Well, then you start getting used to rates being where they are and it becomes the new what? It becomes the new normal. And then all of a sudden people go back to buying and selling real estate just like they always have. And I think that's what you're going to start to see in the first half of this year. So I think, I really think you're going to see inventory up a little bit. I also think you're going to see sales up a little bit because there wasn't even a lot of real estate to choose from in the last half of last year, to be honest with you. So even people that wanted to buy, in some cases, they could not find anything. What happened with prices over the last six years? Have a look at this. So if we look at prices, you can see 2017, they're 805. Now they dipped a little bit in 18. But then what happened from there, they've been going up steadily. And even if we look at 2022, the average price of the year compared to 2021, they were still up, okay, by about $500,000, $600,000 year over year. What's going to happen this year? You know, I'm not 100% sure. But I do sort of feel what we're going to see happen in 2023 is this. I think we're going to start to see inventory rise. I think buyers are going to have a little bit more choice. 
I think because of that, there's actually going to be more buyers that will probably get out into the market because they're going, well, there's more to choose from, right? Which means we can find what it is we're looking for. Plus in their mind, they're thinking that sellers are going to be more negotiable. And by the way, sellers probably will be more negotiable. Why? Because if there's more inventory, sellers start competing to sell. So think about this. If you've got 0.7 months of inventory, everything is selling every month. Well, then all of a sudden, if we go to three months of inventory, which we were pretty well there at the end of the year, that means only 33% of the homes for sale are selling every month. That means two thirds are not selling. Well, if you have one third selling and two thirds not selling, and people are competing to sell because some people have to sell, which in real estate they always do, what do they do? They will take lower price. They take lower price, right? Then all of a sudden they set a new average price. So I tend to think what's going to happen is I do think our sales will be up a little bit this year. Okay. And I'm talking from really the last half of last year. I think our inventory is going to be up, but I think our prices could be relatively stable and maybe move one way or the other just a little wee bit because I do think some sellers are going to be more reasonable so they can actually get their home sold in the market. But here's what I do know. No matter what is happening in the marketplace, there is always opportunities for the great professional realtors. So always remember that. So if you want to get regular updates from us, go to richardrobbins.com, sign up to our email newsletter, and every time we post an update, you'll get it right away. You can download these slides there as well if you find them valuable. Happy New Year to you all. And at the end of the day, everybody, remember, it's a beautiful life. Make it count.